Okay, good morning, everyone. For those of you who have not had the pleasure of meeting, I'm Rick Brokus. I chair the Leadership Council on this side of the hill for Sedona Verde Valley, Ali. And I get the opportunity to give you the highlights of what's going to happen real quick. But I have some announcements, first of all, and then I'll get into the introductions. So uh, we have a guest with us this morning. Dr. Del, Del, Del Genio, excuse me, is here front and center. So nice to see you, doctor. Glad to have you with us. Okay. Also very important, if you are hungry after this event, after this event, okay, the cafe will be open. They have been alerted that they may see more people than normal. So they're on standby and ready and will be uh, available should you want to pick up something to eat before you leave. Okay, uh, I'd like to ask you to please turn off your cell phones, pagers, Blackberries, dictaphones, any other recording type device you may have. <laughs> okay. And there will be a question and answer session after the presentation for the folks here in this room here at the Verde campus. There will be a microphone front and center. We're going to ask you to queue up behind the microphone. Okay. And we'll take it from there. So thanks again for attending this first opening session of our brown bag activities, now called Munch and Learn. We've uh, updated the term. Uh, seems like the younger generation is having problems with certain things, like how to drive a stick shift, how to read script, okay? Somebody actually asked us, brown bag? What the heck is a brown bag? So... <laughs> So uh, to kind of keep up with the times a little bit, we've changed the, the name on that. There is a list of the upcoming brown bags, lunch and, munch and learns, on the table in the back. If you haven't picked one up, please feel free to do so. Okay. If you are not an Ali member and like to know more about Ali, we have that covered. Also, there's a little slip of paper. You can give us some contact info, and we will reach out to you and give you everything you need to know about Ali. If you are an Ali member and would like to bring a guest to a session with you, we have that covered as well. We have a new bring a friend form you fill out, very simple, and that will get them admittance with you. Okay. Uh, we have some great offerings by way of community education, a little different effort. That's actually part of the Gavapai College educational activities. And then, of course, <clears throat> our Ali catalog. If you've not received one, there are extras here. Lots of good information. So please avail yourselves of that. Okay. And last but not least, as you know, Ali is a nonprofit. We continue to strive to stay solvent, stay in the black, if you will. That means that we require income by way of you all paying for classes or people making donations to us. We have a little trifold brochure that tells you a little bit about Ollie and also a QR code here to scan, makes it real simple. You scan that code, takes you directly to the donate site and you can make a donation to Ollie that way as well. We would really appreciate it. Um, for those of you who might not know, we did a 30th anniversary celebration last October, Mary Fisher Theater. <clears throat> Patrick Swice was <clears throat> gracious <clears throat> to donate the theater to us. And that was a very successful event. We have targeted a fundraising campaign at 30,000 and we are right at about 19, just a shade over. So we're well on our way and we're gonna try and wrap that up here pretty quick. So, okay, without further ado, enough of that stuff from me. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you, Dr. Perry Baker. He prefers to be called Dr. Baker, okay? And his wife, Belinda. Dr. Baker, Dr. Baker, Baker is the Dean of the Yavapai College Science, Math, and Technology area. Okay. He holds a bachelor's in microbiology from the University of Washington and a PhD from Arizona State, emphasis in genetics. Okay. He has spoken on the topics of genetics, biotechnology, science education. And in the classroom has facilitated topics such as general biology, microbiology, genetics, cancer genetics, and parasite 
parasitology. I think I hopefully I got that. I had to look that one up. Parasitology. It's basically the study of parasites and their hosts and their relationships. I think you'll see how that comes into play here as we get into the materials this morning. Okay. He also conducts seminars on special topics and research uh, in the areas of uh, allied health and uh, sciences. So, Dr. Baker. Okay. Belinda <clears throat> Baker, <clears throat> born in Australia, has made the U.S. her home for the last 15 years, has a background in marketing and communications, working in the corporate environment. She holds a Bachelor's of Science in uh, Ministry and Communications and a Master's in Educational Health and Wellness. She is a certified rapid transformational therapist. I want to know more about that personally. Because <laughs> okay. we're such a, you know, get it done now, quick society. That would be really interesting to find out more about that. Are you going to say anything about that? In Okay. Well, maybe we'll set up another one of these and you could be the host, guest presenter. Okay. So without further ado, it's my, again, pleasure and honor to introduce to you Dr. Perry Baker. Hey, everybody. Welcome, and thank you for being here this morning. We're excited to be here today. We're going to talk about aging in reverse, discoveries from longevity, and mind-body medicine. I'll take us through the first part with some epigenetics and some research going on there. Belinda will take us through the mind-body part a little bit later in our presentation. So our objectives today are we're going to review recent discoveries from longevity science. It's an emerging field, a lot going on there. My thought is it's about where computers were back in the 70s. This area is just going to explode here in the coming future. And also amazing things being found out by research in mind-body medicine, some of the practices that folks are familiar with, and then some of the other things that we're learning. We're going to look at practical applications of how longevity seekers and entrepreneurs are looking into increasing youthfulness and slowing aging. And we're also going to identify how biomarkers and biologic clocks are being used to predict our aging and our true biologic age. So we can look at interventions and see how things that we might do and might be able to apply help us to reverse aging even. And we're going to review recent experiments suggesting that those aspects of biologic aging are modifiable and can be slowed and even reversed. And then we're going to discuss how researchers and bio-entrepreneurs are creating the science of you getting younger. Just a disclaimer to start with, Belinda and I are not physicians. We're here to present information uh, on an educational basis for everyone. I've referenced everything at the end, so you're welcome to take a look at that material and then cross-reference it for yourself, but always confirm with your own healthcare team anything that uh, you're interested in uh, that might apply to your own uh, advice for your own personal healthcare. So as we start, we'd like to get a little bit of discussion going on both campuses, if you could start by turning to someone next to you and discussing ways that lifestyle and behavior may influence our aging process. And then what would you like to know more about here this morning? So let's turn to someone and get a quick discussion going, and then we'll share a little bit with the group. Well, let's go ahead and move forward then. And let's start out by, um, as you know, these topics are very timely and um, the information there is exploding. I just Googled quickly the ideas about anti-aging research and just put in longevity and pulled up some articles. For example, these are just examples only. You get a lot when you do that. Um, Elixir of life, a new gene in naked mole rats that show promise for extending human longevity. We'll come back to the naked mole rat a little bit later in our talk. Harvard University researcher, 53, says he de-aged himself with some daily simple hacks by 10 years. At 93, this article just came out yesterday. At 93, if folks saw it and saw it on the news, he's as fit as a 30 to 40 year old when you read the article. And 
he didn't even start exercising until he was in his 70s. So I read that and I thought there's always hope. Okay. The guy's 93. He does rowing competition. He's uh, won awards and he didn't even start till after he retired in his 70s. Uh, the biggest breakthrough in longevity may start with menopause. Really interesting stuff going on there with anti-mullerian hormone, a little less known hormone involved in our fertility. This is important from fertility, but also because of the systemic effects that menopause has. So a lot of research going on there, and it looks like some uh, some actual breakthroughs are going to be on the horizon with anti-mullerian hormone. Uh We'll come back to the next one as well later in the talk. People who feel younger at heart live longer. And so science and surveys are showing how our minds can positively affect our aging and our longevity. And really what we're talking about here, and I've, I've had uh, just in discussions here this morning with folks, we want to redefine living longer. We want to redefine how to age chronologically, but stay young and healthy and active physically. And so I pulled up some articles here that give us a reframe for how we might do that and some inspiration. A 105-year-old Louisiana woman sets the record in the 100-meter dash, and she says it's worth living longer. 101-year-old surgeon who still practices every day, and William Shatner, if everybody saw that, uh, folks saw that a year or so ago, went up into space and uh, actually went into space, Captain Kirk. And also a 90-year-old woman talking about the mind-body connection again and learning, becomes the oldest person to complete their master's at a Texas university. So as we're talking through things today, just a reminder, we'll be talking about longevity and looking at some of the research that's coming out, but the foundation is still uh, preventative. It's still those recommendations for annual medical checkups and doing annual screenings, working with your healthcare provider, screening tests to identify any health problems early, including cancer, maintaining that healthy diet and exercising regularly, monitoring blood pressure and blood sugar and addressing any of these issues early, regular dental exams, which you're now finding are important for cognitive health, and staying up to date on recommendations, health recommendations as those change over time. So I'd like to start with that idea of biomarkers again. We'll come back to that. Our understanding of aging has benefited by some of the tools that have been invented along the way. And one is looking at tests that we can easily do that can reveal the true biologic age of our cells. And these tests to be useful would need to be easy to perform. And so they rely on either blood or saliva and look for biologic markers, things that are milestones on our cells, some, uh, some indicators on our cells that change over time as the cells age or as the DNA ages. So the goal is to be able to evaluate these biomarkers and then understand how interventions, as we do the research on that, influence aging and then see how interventions may be helpful to reverse biologic aging. Number of biomarkers have been found and they're commonly used now as biologic clocks of aging. So one of the things we've talked about uh, this morning so far even is a, the mention of telomeres. Telomeres are those ends of chromosomes. Folks may know they shorten when cells divide up till a point is reached when cells are no longer able to replicate. That's a principle called the Hayflick limit that folks discovered quite a while ago, named after the researchers that uh, popularized that view. And so if we take a look at cells in culture, uh, human or animal cells and replicate those, they seem to stop after a period of time. In the human, those cell replications equate to around 150 years. And so folks have seen that as the limit of what uh, aging, uh, where our normal natural aging could be. We're starting, and we'll see today, to understand that that genetic limit may be reversible uh, through epigenetic mechanisms. And so uh, it's called into question that idea that that's a hard limit. So, uh, but 
telomere length is still correlated with aging in cells. That's seen both in living organisms, like I said, and in cell cultures. So reversing telomere shortening is being researched as a method of reversing biologic aging. And so, for example, a lot of exciting research going on there. Uh, diet and exercise have been shown, and I've uh, cited the article here, to lengthen telomeres, to, so to reverse that shortening. Something as simple as diet and exercise. Epigenetic clocks. Uh, a while back, Dr. Stephen Horvath published how changes in DNA methylation predict biologic age. Methyl groups are small molecules that help us regulate DNA. They either are there to activate or deactivate the use of uh, the gene. And so these change, changes are epigenetic in that they alter how the DNA functions rather than the DNA structure, structure itself. Mutations, changes in the DNA, alter the genetic code of our DNA. Uh, but epigenetic changes modify how that DNA is used, again, how it's switched on or switched off. And so we'll be talking mainly about epigenetic changes here today. So it turns out that that can be measured, the methylation state and measurements of methylation is now a common epigenetic clock. So a biologic clock that we can use across species humans and other animal species to be predictive of age and also age-related risk of age-related disease. So methods of altering methylation then, of course, are a target for anti-aging research, looking for a way to slow or reverse the biologic aging process. And for example, again, the article that I've cited here shows that exercise and diet, again, uh, you'll see that there's a common theme here, are able to reverse aging as shown by the Horvath clock. So alter our methylation patterns. Other epigenetic changes in aging. David Sinclair, if folks Google him, uh, or if you're aware of him, you see he's very prolific with uh, talking. You'll see a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of research done by him and uh, books, several books that he's written as well. Um, he's shown that it's possible to reprogram cells in a way that restore youthful DNA methylation patterns. And so if methylation changes as we get older, Sinclair's innovation was that that can be reversible. So these findings indicate cells retain their original DNA programming. It's just how it's being accessed that changes primarily over time, and that can be reversed to extend lifespan and improve health span. So we used to think that DNA changed over time and that was the cause of aging. If you look back at, at what folks uh, would have taught or talked about a while ago, now we're seeing that that DNA sequence itself is fairly robust and it's the epigenetic the on and off switches that are reading the DNA uh, that are changing over time. Sinclair's team and others uh, as well, but Sinclair's team primarily are also known for NAD research, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, a very important energy compound within the cells, uh, a molecule that we use and that declines with age. And so they've researched supplements that boost NAD levels, such as nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN, that folks may have seen as a supplement, and nicotinamide ribozyme, NR. Uh, both of those are being used as supplements. And Sinclair's team found that those can re, uh, reverse aging and activate cellular repair. And so we'll see a common theme here as well. Cell damage that occurs over time, if we can activate better cellular repair, we can modulate that, we can alter aging, and in some cases reverse those aspects of aging. Sinclair has, uh, like I said, if he's very prolific. If you look, you'll see a lot out there by him. And uh, he stated that he, he and his family are taking NMN, primarily, 
himself, and he said his lipid profile has improved dramatically. He's also uh, one of those folks that, even though he's around 60, says he has the blood work of around a 30-year-old. So he has stated that um, he and his family are both taking NMN. One of the probably the most robust and well-known um, mechanisms for altering aging that's been around for quite a while is calorie restriction. Calorie restriction, uh, it's been known for a long time in lab animals that if you reduce feeding down to the range of 40 to 60% uh, less of their calories, that they actually have more energy and they live longer. And uh, in researching that, folks have realized that that's, again, because it activates cellular repair um, that is very important for eliminating inactive or cell, uh, senescent cells within tissues and organs. As we age, non-functional senescent cells begin to accumulate, and methods for reversing that, removing those senescent cells, replacing them with active cells are very important in uh, anti-aging research. Calorie restriction has been shown to improve activity levels, health span in animals and also their lifespan. And depending on the species, the most promising results have been from 50 to 300% improvement in lifespan. And so um, those organisms, anything from small worms that they study in the lab, fruit flies, mice uh, have shown this effect. The level of calorie restriction, though, is fairly hard to achieve in active humans. And so we've looked for quite a while at uh, drugs and supplements that might mimic this effect by interacting with different pathways and trying to activate the same uh, mechanisms that you get with calorie restriction. And so some of the uh, drugs and also supplements that folks may have heard about fall into this category, metformin drug that's used for diabetes currently, but it's also uh, shown to have some, some of the same uh, calorie restriction mimetic effects. Rapamycin, an antibiotic, it's been used and shown in animals to extend life. Uh, I've put some references at the end. There's a dog anti-aging pro project that studied rapamycin with dogs and looking at how it's improving their lifespan and health span. And some of the uh, supplements, fisetin, quercetin, resveratrol, NAD precursors that we talked about, EGCG from green tea, curcumin, willow bark, or salicylic acid, which is aspirin, have all been shown through research to affect human health, both systemically and tissue specifically. The idea here is uh, a, a concept of hermesis things that affect the cell and initiate cellular repair boost our health, our cellular health and our tissue health, as well as our, our overall health. Hermesis comes from the Greek, and it's the idea that something that can do a little bit of harm but not kill the cell can help it regenerate and activate those repair mechanisms. And so the idea here is to stress things a little bit. When you exercise, everyone knows you stress your muscles a little bit and they repair themselves. Um, heat shock or cold shock can do that in the laboratory for cells and calorie restriction is a mild way of doing that. And so uh, a lot of research going on in calorie mimetics. Let's go back and talk a little bit more about the naked mole rat, not an attractive animal. I've got a picture there. Um, they've been used for quite a while in lab research, and uh, so folks have studied them. They found some really unique characteristics. They have a very exceptional longevity. Folks may know that a mouse may live three, four, or five years, something like that. Um, another rodent here of similar size, a little bit bigger, the naked mole rat can live up to 30 years old. And in fact, when you look at the articles, they don't seem to die of aging. They either die of accidents, usually are being attacked by another naked mole rat. So in addition to that longevity, which is really unusual for their size and, uh, and a rodent, 
they show a very unusual resistance to cancer. Multiple year uh, analysis of colonies of naked mole rats have shown that they didn't even have a single incidence of cancer, which is really remarkable. The naked mole rats, as people began to study, and this is fairly current, you look back over the past two or three years, you'll see that uh, researchers have identified hyaluronic acid in the naked mole rat, a very high molecular weight or high molecular mass hyaluronic acid as being uh, the likely molecule that's producing this effect. Hyaluronic acid, uh, folks may be familiar with from uh, supplements or from medicine, it's used in dermatology for uh, 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 fillers, for uh, dermatological purposes, skin fillers. It's also used medically for joints and arthritis uh, as injections. It's found in supplements for joints and arthritis, and it's also uh, used cosmetically. Cosmetics have it in it. This is a very high, unique, high molecular weight hyaluronic acid. And to confirm that that's the actual function of it, uh, folks have cloned that particular hyaluronic acid into mice, and they found that the mouse did indeed have improved lifespan and health span, uh, confirming that that is the likely molecule that's having this effect within the naked mole rat. So one of the study authors uh, on the paper that I've cited here says our next goal is to apply this, of course, to humans. So looking ahead on the horizon, there's probably going to be uh, products or breakthroughs coming from this research as well. And now we'd like to uh, talk about, and Belinda will come forward, the mind-body connection. So some very recent research is, I think, illuminating what folks have known or known intuitively about mind-body practices and how they can affect our lifespan and health span. But very recently, I came across this research that was, um, I think, encouraging and very interesting uh, because it's saying that folks with a younger subjective age, if you feel younger than your chronologic age, you actually have physical um, effects associated with that. It's associated with positive outcomes as people age. It's in, associated with better memory, for example, better health, better longevity. And a number of studies have focused on that. Younger subjective age, that feeling again, that you're younger than your chronologic age, having that attitude, you might say, has been correlated with lower levels of inflammation, healthier weight, less diabetes, better blood pressure, better uh, brain matter, healthier lungs, stronger muscles, and even better sleep. And conversely, the research has shown that if you feel older than your chronologic age, that that has effects as well, accelerating even shortening of DNA telomeres, those biomarkers that we've talked about. So with that kind of framing our discussion, we'd like to do another quick activity. Belinda will come forward and um, take us through that. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, we're going to briefly look at some mind-body practices this morning and things that you'll be familiar with and also how our thoughts and our thinking affects our health and well-being. But before we do, we're going to do this activity together, take about five minutes, and then um, in about five, ten minutes, we're going to do a visualization. So let's start with the activity. So let's take a, a moment to discuss again with those around you. Uh, where did your beliefs of aging come from? And how have your beliefs changed over time? Okay. I can't wait to hear what you think. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. Different cultures have different, um, I, I know Asian cultures, for instance, are very respectful, very honoring as people get old. Um, actually, it's better. Um, I worked in Hong Kong. It's better over there if you do have gray hair because um, you're expected, uh, respected and admired. Um, speaking like just personally, my grandmother, who's 99, the key thing for her, she's having some problems now with arthritis. She's, you know, she keeps moving and she's doing great. But her main focus has been 
her mind. Her mind is so sharp. And that's been her key thing that that's been, she, you know, she kind of looks like she's, oops, um, she kind of looks like she's 99 now or getting up there. I'd say she looks like she's in her early nineties. Um, but mentally she's great. And that's been the key thing for her. And so I think we can always have goals and things that actually we can look to and go, okay, this is what I really want to do. This is where I want to go. And we can have some form of control over that. So let's move on. And let's see a couple of practices that we're doing today that you've probably definitely heard of. So today, mind-body practices. Oops. There's a remote. Okay. Hold on, everybody. Do I have to? Oh, how do I? Thanks. Yep. Okay. Um, mind-body practices are being used alongside medical therapies and treatments and these include ones that you've definitely heard of, things like relaxation, cognitive behavioral therapy, meditation, imagery, biofeedback, and hypnosis. Research has also shown, oops, to remember to do this. Research has also shown that the mind-body practices of things like Tai Chi, yoga, mindfulness, and meditation can have a really positive effect on us epigenetically. They have been shown to help with things like inflammation, stress, and can also help us relax. Further, people who meditate, it has been shown to have longer telomeres. I know someone asked about telomeres before. Even meditation can help with lengthening your telomeres. So hypnosis also helps us with learning and developing new nerve pathways. As noted in uh, Marissa Peer's book, yep, uh, You Can Be Younger, she talks about how we can instruct ourselves by our thoughts we hold in our mind to help us be ageless. So... What I'd like to actually do now is, act, well, just quickly, mindful visualization, which is what we're just about to do, does have a positive effect on ourselves. And the mind is an important anti-aging tool. It is how we look at it. It's our positive attitude. Um, positivity helps a lot. So now we're going to actually do a visualization. And this is a disclaimer. So... Please um, read the disclaimer and um, it's voluntarily, you, I mean, it's voluntary, it's for education only and is not intended to provide medical advice, diagnose treatment, anything like that. So feel free to decline. If you don't want to stay, you don't have to. It takes about 10 minutes. I just get you to do some um, deep breathing. Then we close our eyes and then you just listen to the um, what I say, it's a visualization, so you're actually thinking it through. Um, so, and of course, if you um, need to stop for any reason, that's fine too. Okay, so we will continue unless anyone would like to leave. I will not be offended. <laughs> okay, so if you... Yes, yeah. however you're comfortable... If you'd like to sit with your legs crossed, I know my husband can't do that anymore. So. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to start now by breathing in for four and then out for four, in for four counts. So breathing in, one, two, three, four, and breathing out, one, two, three, four. Okay, breathing in and breathing out. And breathing in and breathing out. And if your eyes aren't already closed, please close them now. And one more time, breathing in, breathing out. You're doing beautifully. As you relax and absorb these words, your inner mind, your conscious mind, the most powerful part of you, is now, unlock, is now locking onto these words and accepting them easily 
as you become more and more aware that you have a strong desire, a powerful motivation, and an ability to feel healthy, vibrant, and younger. You are an example of youthfulness. You express yourself as young. You embody the expression of health and youthfulness because you think, you act, and you feel ageless. You feel young and you have a wonderful enthusiasm for life. You are looking forward to your future. There is so much for you to plan and enjoy. Rather than reminiscing about the good old days, you are excited about life today, tomorrow, and the future. You love life. You embrace yourself. And this is expressed in your zest and enthusiasm for life. You hold in your mind an image of you enjoying excellent health in which you are active and agile. You have vigor and vitality and an abundance of energy. You have a passion for life and you take on new activities without paying any attention to your age. You are becoming a walking, talking, breathing example of health, wholeness, and strength. You and your cells are working as a perfect team. As you look after your body, your body looks after you. As you direct your cells, your cells are becoming imprinted with your thoughts of health and youthfulness. You can feel the life force of your cells in every gland, nerve, tissue of your body. You have a constant feeling of rejuvenation. When you were younger, your cells repaired and renewed themselves at peak efficiency. You had perfect cells, and your cells have a memory of this. You can activate this memory. Think of yourselves becoming younger now. Imagine your cells doing their perfect work. Every time you think these thoughts, each cell is renewing itself with a younger, healthier, and stronger cell. You are communicating with the intelligence of your cells and directing each cell to function as a young, healthy cell now and always. Every cell in your body is a conscious being. Each of your cells is intelligent and is responding to your thinking as you think about becoming younger, fitter, active, and agile. As you relax and think these thoughts and hear these words, you are able to drift into your subconscious, a state where you are able to penetrate the cell to communicate with your DNA the blueprint of healthy cells. You direct each cell to replace itself with a younger, healthier cell, activating the rejuvenation process by communicating with your cells and increasing cell renewal and rejuvenation. Your ability to think these thoughts, to see these things and accept these suggestions is having a powerful effect on your cells right now. You are able to stimulate your mind and body into action. Just thinking of it is causing your inner mind to picture it and manifest it perfectly. Each new cell is growing strong, resilient, and perfect. Your cells grow younger and healthier because you instruct them to. Your cells replace themselves with even more perfect cells. See your cells now as glowing, healthy, youthful, perfect, resilient cells, perfectly tuned to one another, communicating perfectly so that every cell is at the right place at the right time, working perfectly for you with wonderful results. And as you hear these words, each one is making a deep, lasting impression on your mind 
and replacing every negative belief with a new, positive, constructive one. My voice is going with you, staying embedded in you. It has a permanent, powerful, and positive healing effect on you. Now, if you could breathe in for four and out for four. And one more time, breathing in and breathing out. Now open your eyes and come back to full awareness. And well done. And thank you, everybody.